Ah, there you are. Edward, hi, welcome. Hi. Um, Edward, you know, you, you obviously have a, a large room here of people in support of you. Um, we are in Germany, and you can't be with us on this stage. Do you feel let down by the German government? I think whenever there's a uh, kind of a political challenge we face like this, where there's, um, there's clear public support, there's kind of a universal public opinion um, about how we should move in relation to resolving surveillance problems, privacy problems, uh, confronting issues with the general weakness of the modern asylum right. Uh, it's, it's not something that we should express disappointment in. It's not something that we should go, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sad about this because I haven't gotten my optimal goal. Instead, we need to think about it as an opportunity. You know, um, engineers, scientists, they look for unanswered questions. They look for unanswered problems. What we're seeing in the wake of 2013 is not really about surveillance. It's about democracy. It's about the fact that increasingly, Governments view themselves as a particular elite class, which has a different set of interests from the public broadly. Uh, there's no question that, um, shall we say, the political establishment of the German federal government is not aware of the public's opinion uh, on the issue of protection of the asylum right for people who have uh, revealed evidence of serious wrongdoing or crimes. However, the German government is not willing to defend that, even when they realize it's quite likely no costs would be imposed. Um, in my case, specifically were I to talk about that, uh, one of the, the sort of defenses that's been provided is that the United States government would be outraged. Uh, you know, they would take some kind of uh, action, some consequences against the German government in retaliation. But is that really realistic? I mean, Germany is, for all intents and purposes, the leader of the European Union. Um, they're an advanced democracy, they're a strong ally, they're a strong uh, economy, and they have a, a quite well-established tradition of defending uh, individual and collective rights. But do you not think, Edward, that they would be, that, that Germany, that the leaders of Germany, do you not think that they fear that there would be real and serious consequences for, for the government and for the security of Germany if they did, if they were to grant you asylum? I don't think so, no. I'm sure they've been, uh, that's been communicated through uh, both official channels and unofficial channels. But I mean, these are savvy politicians. We're talking about Angela Merkel. She's not uh, some, some new person who's never seen this kind of uh, international signal. Well, you know, she's been criticized at home a lot, though, for being the chancellor who had a phone that was, um, you know, that could be tapped by the NSA. Right, but that doesn't mean that she's uh, politically naive. That's talking about sort of security implications, which we've got to remember in the context uh, before June of 2013, this was kind of a dark art. Yes, intelligence services would provide warning. Yes, there are counter uh, counterintelligence officials uh, who would write reports about this. Yes, there are technology researchers who have published papers for years and years and years about the potential of the threat. But we didn't expect that this would really be happening. And we got to remember, this isn't just Germany. This also happened uh, in the White House. Uh, we have here a story that was published just a few days ago, yeah. which is the very first public confirmation, I believe, uh, from a National Security Council meeting in the United States, where you've got an exchange between uh, Susan Rice mm -hmm. and Director uh, Keith Alexander of the National Security Agency, where when the story broke, the White House's response wasn't, you know, how do we handle this? It was, why were you listening to Angela Merkel's phone? And Keith Alexander, director of the NSA, said, because you told us to. These agencies, these practices had become invisible, not just to the public, not just to people like Angela Merkel, but within the White House itself. 